Hello and good morning in a new episode of the Stammtisch Gondola in the Hohe Mutbahn in Obergogel. In front of me, two very special skiers, Dave Riding and Hubertus von Hohenlohe. Hello, welcome Hello. here in Obergogel. First question, tea or Glühwein? Tea, thank you. I have to say tea. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say tea. We're take. We are both take, take whatever we're both you like. British. No, I'm not. I'm Mexican. But <laughs> no Glühwein in Mexico, I guess. Are you sure? I think so. Um, I have a few questions to you um, right here on my piece of paper. We try to do it in, in English this time. Yes. I hope wow. we Look can understand sun. each other. Um, both of you uh, multiple times have been multiple times at the Olympic Winter Games. Yeah. Well, this six times. And Dave, you have been there two, time, two times. We will see you both in in the Olympic Games in South Korea? Yes. yes. In, fingers, yeah. in, in which disciplines? I will stick By the way, to, uh, cookies, please. I will stick to my discipline of slalom. I don't think I venture into yeah. that. No. <laughs> I have a pact with my girlfriend and my mother that I also am only allowed to go slalom. Although I get also <laughs> crashes and, and injury in slalom, but I still, it's maybe the, 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 the less speedier. So it's going to be slalom also. Which at my age and in my uh, kind of constitution is more difficult, but it's challenging. So far. And by the way, this is the whole Mexican ski team <laughs> sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly the whole. Nearly the whole. <laughs> Dave, since your last, um, since your last uh, race in Val d'Isère, you are a member from the Obergogel Hochgogel family. Welcome once Thank again you. here. What do you know about our region here? Like uh, of Obergogel, Hochgogel, and what's the most interesting things here for you? Well, I know the uh, the Brits absolutely love it here, and uh, now I see why the skiing is absolutely fantastic, and the the scenery is yeah second to none. So uh, yeah, I, I love the the mountains, like that's where I class as home. And uh, yeah, obviously uh, I can't sample so much apres ski, but there's some uh, <laughs> there's some really good places to go. I, yeah. I hear, but yeah, maybe after the season I can also. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll give you some private yeah. lessons. Exactly, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you prepare for your Olympic slalom? Um, how does your training look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, right now it's focused on the World Cup, and uh, yeah. I have to try and get my World Cup season good, and then that'll give me confidence for the Olympics. So. Uh, yeah, it's building towards that, but first things first, January is very busy especially, so uh, I have to get through that month and then focus on the Olympics. Good luck from, from my side. Thank you. Um, you, you. You started skiing very, very late, yeah. and in the age of 12 on a dry slope on a plastic mat. Yeah. Could, yeah. You, could, you, could you tell us how, how was the way to get into a World Cup race from, from a plastic mat? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the second it's, place it's, at it's not normal but um yeah it's just uh, every year i i enjoyed it and i kept putting in the work i never thought yeah i'm never gonna make it or i never thought i'm definitely gonna make it i just kept coming back every summer working and uh yeah th i guess that's why it took me longer because i started later so uh, you have to learn the skills and uh yeah you have to give yourself time so uh I did that and then I proved that I could do it. Super. Uh, Great, Brit Great Britain is a ski fanatic country. Yeah. Here in Obergogel it's the second important market, market after Germany. Yeah. Do you know why British people are so interested in winter sports and skiing? Yeah. And why do they like the winter in the mountains? There is millions of Brits go skiing uh, every winter. So um, uh, I guess they love it because of where it is, the snow. It's fun. Yeah. And um, yeah, they can party as well as, as ski. So oh, yes. <laughs> the Brits know how to party and yeah. Oh, yes. Combine them both. And uh, yeah, we don't have so much snow in, in Britain. So when yeah. they go away, it's, it's nice for everyone. And yeah. A question to both of you. Do you have a special tip for our ski guests from members of the Olympic Games? What, what, what could be very special tips, for example, for a ski beginner? from real professionals. What do you have an idea? What would you say to a beginner? Um, listen to the coach and do, do the basics. Do the basics. And within a couple of days you and a couple of blue vines, you'll be at the top of the mountain. So <laughs> don't worry too much. <laughs> I think so too. I think, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a game, it's a play and you have to play it and you have to enjoy it. And you don't have to think too much. You have to kind of feel the body and, and feel what you can do. 
and suddenly step by step you're gonna get better but if you get kind of too cramped up then you're not gonna enjoy it and every time you crash you have a negative thought so it's about positive thoughts enjoy the beautiful mountain and laugh about it you know yeah. and get get into it by playing and he's older man than my dad so it's <laughs> never too late so yes. all these people that say oh we're too old you're never too old that, that, that's right, who yeah. you started skiing um, in, in, a, in, in an age where you already haven't been born. Yeah. No, I, I, I skied my first Olympics when he wasn't born, I think. When, yeah. when, did you, when were you born? In 86. Well, in 84 I was already in Sarajevo yeah, yeah. fighting it out with You've Bill Johnson. You've so experience. Yes, it's true. <laughs> How does it come from, for such a long uh, ski career? It yeah. actually. It How does it come? Yeah, I tell you. Um, it started that I really, I really liked it. I, it was a passion. I came to Austria because they sent me. I was living in Spain, and uh, they sent me to the schools here. And they were really dark the winters. And the only thing that was exciting is watching kind of the races on TV and going out and skiing myself. And I said, this is what I have to do. I have to crash down these mountains. <laughs> and then I kind of became good and good. And I went to Franz Klammer and I bought him the downhill suit in Kitzbühel. And, and yeah. I, I was 16. And he said, what do you need it for? I said, I'm going to race down here one day. He said, no, then I won't give it to you. I said, no, it's a joke, it's a joke. <laughs> so four years later, I was like standing at the start and I was going down. He said, I don't believe you're here. And then um, as years went by, I kind of wanted to stop. But, you know, the FIS always did rules against the small nations so that they were not allowed to go. They were not allowed to be in the World Cup and all this. So I said, I have to stand for the small nations and kind of do everything that, you know, give them still some kind of exposure and some glamour and say that it's important that you have a lot of different nations racing and this is why I'm uh, especially happy if somebody like um, like Dave or like Alan Baxter that did it before uh, skis for a, a country that is not so mm -hmm. ski is pro professional and does well so it's, I think it's very important and, and I know how, how the, they can be so short-sighted and not see that it's important that everybody loves and tries out skiing you know yeah you are you I agree 100 percent you, you're a sportsman and a globetrotter. You have already seen lots of beautiful places. And you, as, a, as your profession, as a photographer, yes. what would your eyes, wh what would be in a picture of Ogogl in your eyes? My God, I mean, it's really impressive. It, it's, it feels a bit like, like, a bit like Himalaya in a way. I think, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, no, it feels like so, no, you look at this. I, I have, you know, you don't see so many ski lifts anywhere. It's like very rocky and very strong. I think it looks, looks very strong. No? Yeah, what does it look like? It's really cool. You, like he says, it's not like ski lifts all, Every, over, the all place. over the place. It's, well. it's just. I mean, if you look in here, it, it looks to me that this is an, you know, like a strong mountain. It, yeah. I think it's very, very strong and very impressive. Um, and, you know, I'm not the best nature photographer because I'm very pop art. But I love it. I mean, visually, it's amazing. I mean, it, it gives me a high. I, I, I just have the feeling, wow, it's a high. I mean, today is a high. I mean, probably in a bad day, it's not so good. <laughs> if if good weather is, it's everything good. Yeah, so, so but it's so good no, today. This, 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 this uh, no. non-cloudy weather is the, 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 the picture. I yeah. think, you know, nature has such power and grounds you. And, you know, for me that travels a lot and does music and TV shows and all this, it's all kind of a bit superficial. It's a bit fake. There is some real stuff in it, but yeah. it's also kind of fake. To then have the chance to, to, to go out and ski with people that, that have put a lot of work in it is real, that I think grounds me as a person. And yeah. I think I haven't, I haven't kind of l left uh, uh, our planet Earth yet because I have skiing in my life. That's important, yeah. Can you imagine to, ma uh, to make an exhibition uh, right here up in the mountains? Why not? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd, I'd love the idea. I, I, I had an idea once that I did in, in another ski resort where I took away all the advertisements and instead of the advertisements I had my artworks there. And that looks so super because people go there and they expect to see Audi or, I don't know, Pitts Buin and then they suddenly see an artwork and they don't really get it. And then the second time they see it's art. So this is very interesting. But I know you have a museum, so I should also check out the museum. Yes, yes, please. But there's motorcycles there. I, I, I have no space. The motorcycles are getting, <laughs> getting my space away. Um, you speak six languages fluently. Five. Five. Five fluently, six badly. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody sees this is Christmas time right now. Could you tell our viewers Merry Christmas in, in, in these different languages what you can Absolutely. talk? Where to? Here? <laughs> anyway. Five cameras. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Yeah. You know that song from? Yes. I know. Feliz Navidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Uh, jo Joël Noël, en français. Et, um, buona Pasqua. Buon Natale in Italiano. 
Uh, frohe Weihnachten. And in English, he will say. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to all. Also from my side, we are up on the home route right now. I have also here a guest book. Could you please sign this guest book for me? Yes. Just write yeah. something nice into there. And if possible, write me a recommendation to a person what you think should be sitting next here on this okay. place. Thank you once again for so much. going up with me here on the whole mood. Frohe Weihnachten, Merry Christmas to all of you. So have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.